Do you want to get more fruit, nicer fruit next year? Well, here's the thing to do this year. It's It's important to understand how a fruit tree goes. It's not an annual, it's not a radish seed. It's something that's around for a long time. And most fruit trees prepare next year's crop this year. So if you look closely, there's buds in here. There's spurs and there's buds. And these buds are next year's flowers and next year's fruit. So if you did a really good job this year, fruit trees will reward you next year. If you did, or the conditions or the year was terrible this year, well, maybe your fruit won't be so well prepared next year. Let me show you apple buds, because they get really a lot bigger. See that bud right there? That's a terminal bud. It gets nice and fat. And that will make a really nice cluster of flowers next year. And so those flowers are the hope of a good crop. Then they need to be pollinated. The fruit will have to set. If you say, well, I don't know. Listen, go watch my two videos on the nine total reasons why your fruit tree isn't producing fruit. I'm assuming your tree is mature. I'm assuming there's more than one cultivar, so you'll have. So go see that one on. There's nine reasons why your fruit tree can not be producing fruit. But I'm assuming your tree is going to produce fruit or is already producing fruit. So if it is, here's this one thing that you really need to do this year. And let me give you a bit of a backstory on that. We used to have sheep. We used to have an organic orchard with 3,000 trees at that point. It was just apples. And we had a hundred sheep would run through the orchard on a rotation, go through at least five times in the year. And in those years, that was the best crops I got in quality. I'm not saying in number necessarily, but in quality, it gave me beautiful fruit, mainly because the sheep were really good at going around under the tree. The beauty with sheep is they could go through and they would look in the grass and they would go along and sniff. You could hear them. They'd smell and oh, here, oh, in the grass. And they'd come up with the apples that had fallen. And by gathering up the apples that had fallen on a regular basis, so they'd do it five, six times in the season, in the whole year, there was fruit starting in about June, so they would pretty well get eaten up June, July, August, and then in September, when the main amount of fruit would fall. Now, one of the important things of picking up the fruit that fell, great with sheep, but you say, I don't have sheep. I have one or two fruit trees. Look, then you have to do the job of the sheep. Sepp Holzer used to say, if you don't want a pig to do the job, then you inherit the job of the pig. <laughs> so I now have inherited the job of the sheep. I should have sheep again. They did a, it was a great job they would do because they could find the apples that we couldn't even find because they would smell them. But the important thing is if you have an apple in a tree and it falls, I'm not talking about a Newton moment, but usually a fruit that falls is one that has insect damage. So you see here some insect damage on that fruit. Now, if I leave this apple and that goes for any fruit. If I leave it for two months, well, I can be pretty sure that any insect that are still in this apple will have a chance to come out of the fruit, wiggle their way 
into the soil and then they spend the winter there. What do you think happens next year? That insect is right there, right below the surface. They don't go down five feet. They go just below the soil surface. Well, when the conditions are right for that species of insect next year, where do you think they'll be coming out? Right below the tree. So they come out, take a quick look around. Oh, look, there's some fruit that are forming. And so they just find their way back up to the trees and reinfect the, tr the fruit again. So you say, oh, is that why I've been getting? It's not a guarantee that you'll avoid every insect because there's different reasons. They can, they can even be coming from the neighbors. But for you, start, the most important thing is start collecting all of the drops, ideally once a week. So if you say, hey, you know what? Sunday before lunch, I go for a walk under my fruit trees and I clean up all of the, all of the drops. Fantastic. If you do that from our June, so if you're in Australia and New Zealand, it's your January. If you start when the fruit start falling in June and you start collecting those fallen fruit, because many of them will have insect damage, then you will be removing those fruit from allowing the insect to re in re-inoculate the soil and re-infect underneath that tree. So pick it up. Don't put it in your compost unless you have a hot compost pile. If your compost pile gets hot, I mean you stick your finger in and you go, that's hot. Well, that's fine because these fruit and the insect larvae that are in it will cook. So get your gather them, put them in a hot compost pile, dispose of them if you have to, and just get them out of there so that it doesn't start the cycles again. Ideally, if you're the only one of has that kind of fruit around, it may very well work that that collection, and you don't forget, if you do it next year, it won't affect next year's crop it will affect the year after so this this year get your fruit that are under the tree it won't change this year's crop but it can go a long way towards in improving next year's crop so get picking and you think well that's no fun that's why it was more fun to have sheep go along and pick them up find them and then they would eat them. So you would produce some really good lamb and good meat. But at least you pick them up. Inherit that work and you'll be a long way towards improving your fruit quality and also quantity because there's that many less apples or whatever fruit it is that will drop because they are affected by insects. Thanks for watching. Intrigued? Check out the virtual tour of the permaculture orchard. Have trees already? Pruningcourse.com. Subscribe, please. Check out some of the other videos or playlists. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Bye. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Thanks for sharing it. Bye. Do you?